tonight's performance. There has been an accident here tonight, but there is no need for alarm. Just walk out quietly and your money will be refunded at the box office. Save us a lot of trouble. You quarreled with your wife tonight, didn't you? Didn't you? Yeah, we had an argument. And all adds up to murder. No, I tell you, I didn't do it. I had nothing to do with it. You expect me to believe that? I tell you again, we just had an argument. All married people argue once in a while. It doesn't mean anything. But this was more than an argument. Look, haven't you got any feelings? My wife's just been killed. I just found this under the sofa. Four shots fired. I found two of them in the wall. I guess the other two are in the body. Poor Eddie. It's a dirty shame. Yep. I've been working here for 17 years. Never saw a prettier smile. She was nice to everybody. You should know. She was dynamite. When me and Sam played on the same bill with her, I never let him out of my sight. Well, only last night her light was out and she wanted me to fix it. And now, her light is out forever. You see, them that least deserves it gets it. Better phone headquarters again. Get everyone on stage for questioning. Uh, yes, sir. Everybody on stage. I guess this simplifies the whole matter. What does? 
Look at this. I suppose you never saw it before, did you? You're right, I didn't. But they just found it in your dressing room. This is the gun you killed her with, isn't it? She was my wife. I loved her. You don't kill the woman you love. Get the rest of the performers up here. Uh, then with Rosita. She's fainted. But, but I'll get them, sir. Right away, sir. Yes, sir. You? Monsieur, name? Je suis François Gaston de Marie, monsieur. Profession? I am an artist, monsieur. You see, I am, uh, how do you say that? Come on, get on, sir. I jump in and out of the barrel of the <laughs> You see? Hiding in a barrel, huh? Oh, c'est fantastique, monsieur. Moi, moi, je suis un artiste, monsieur. Comment ça veut dire ça? Alors, voyons, ça. Over here. Alors, ça, c'est fantastique, ça, tout de même. Ça, je me comprends pas. Name? Sam and Sally Hampton. Ten minutes of snappy songs and sassy sayings. That's us, right? Right. What do you know about this killing? Oh, not a thing, Your Honor. I mean, Mr. Officer. We were in our dressing room. We didn't see nothing, we didn't hear nothing, and we don't know nothing, right? Right. Did you know the deceased? I'll say. And if you want my opinion, she didn't get no more than was coming to her, right? Wrong. Uh, right. Next. <laughs> She wasn't shot. She was strangled. Now what? Strangled? I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it. Well, you're the only one who doesn't. Take this man to headquarters for further questioning. I wish I hadn't been here tonight. It was awful. Yeah. Just like I say. You can live our whole life backstage. Just one night. Last week, this stork almost caught up with your own wife. And tonight? I don't even want to think about it. Those screams. Yeah. Now that I think of it, I should have investigated them sooner. Pop, you've seen a lot of things in your time, haven't you? Every day. Makes me feel that fellow was right. Life's nothing but a stage, and everybody plays on it. Yeah. Only some of them get better billing. Guess you never know when your exit's coming. Better that way. Well, better go and finish my work. Oh, and don't forget to turn out the lights when you're through. Okay, Pop. Say, I've seen you before. Sure I have. You're Flammarion. The great Flammarion. Great Flammarion. I'm Tony, the clown. I played on the same bill with you in Pittsburgh. Remember me? What a... Flammarion. I'll get a doctor. No, no, please don't. But, but you're liable to die. Yes. Oh, you don't know what you're saying. Nobody wants to die. I do. Why? Because I killed Kahani. You? She shot me and I strangled her. But they're holding her husband. 
Eldon. He's innocent. Oh, you better tell them yourself. They may not believe me. I'll have them here in no time. No use. I'll be dead before they get here. But before I die, I want to tell you, Tony, why I killed him. Let me. Let me. Go ahead. Talk to him. It all started in Pittsburgh. You remember my act and my two sisters, Connie and Al Wallace? Before they tear up the seats. Let them. You were one beat off in front of the mirror. You came directly into my line of fire. I'm sorry, boss. I... And I know why. Just one little one, not enough to... Enough to cause an accident. I'll take my chances with you any time. But it won't happen again. My act runs according to my rules. Those who break them are out. Mr. Fumarian. I'm sorry about Al's performance. So am I. I promise you it won't happen again. It's not up to you to make that promise. Don't worry. Al will do as I say. There is no room for mistakes, no matter what. I must be absolutely sure of my assistance. But, Mr. Flamaris, you can always be sure of me. I guess you don't realize how important all this is to me. The continued success of my act is my only concern. And mine. It's the only thing that makes my life bearable. If I couldn't look forward to the theater and the lights, just to seeing you, I wouldn't care if I never woke up again. Your personal feelings do not interest me in the least. I repeat once and for all, one more mistake, and I'm through with both of you.
I had picked up Connie and her husband, Al, six months before, when they were a third-rate dancing act. I had always thought of them as a happily married couple. Okay, Lush, that'll be enough of that. You heard Flammarion. Maybe you like sleeping on a park bench, but I don't. Scared at night, cramp your style? Crack like that, and you're gonna be down for the count. Don't try playing rough with me. Brother, you're asking for it. Can't you stay sober long enough to stooge for a couple of guns? Seems even a moron would have backbone enough to... So now I'm a moron, huh? You changed your tune since the day you bought our wedding ring. Were you scared I might slip off the hook? Now look, Al, let's not go into that routine again. There's an easy way out of all... And it's another routine we won't go into. If you think I'm gonna let you go so that some other guy can have you, you're off your nut. I'll get away from you sometime. <laughs> you haven't got a prayer. Let's see. There was that business with a diamond ring in Memphis. The insurance company is still interested in that. And that little trick you pulled on the guy in Salt Lake City. He'd love to know where to find you. And that quick shuffle you gave the bank president in Des Moines. Whatever did become of those bonds, Connie? I didn't find out till after I married you. What a busy life you'd led. No, I don't think you'll get away from me. Not until I'm good and ready to let you go. Oh, quit it, hon. You're just wasting a lot of valuable time on yesterday's bad news. Doesn't it interest you? No. Only tonight interests me. Go on someplace? Sure I am. I'm going home with my husband. Connie, no matter what you do, you're the only dame for me. You're a bad habit I can't cure, even if I wanted to. Any guy that wouldn't fall for you is either a sucker or he's dead. I lived a lonely life. I had no friends. I didn't like people, and people didn't like me. I didn't drink, I didn't smoke. I retired every night immediately after the performance. For hours, I practiced to strengthen my eyes. This afternoon, my schedule was broken. I had an unexpected visitor. Who is it? It's me, Connie. Mrs. Wallace, I'm busy. I'll see you at the theater. I've got to talk to you. This sign means exactly what it says. You must listen, it's important. Well? I found out why Al's drinking. The reason for his conduct doesn't interest me, except as it affects my act. This affects you because it's personal. He's jealous of you. <laughs> Ridiculous. Jealous of me because I'm a star and he's a nobody? Am I responsible for his being a drunkard without ambition or talent? Has he any idea of how hard I had to work to get where I am? Al knows all that. But there's more to life than what happens in the theater. What is it, then? I think he knows how I feel about you. How you feel about me? Why, your work has always been satisfactory. You work for hours to strengthen your eyes, but you can't see. You're blind. Well, it had to happen. I'm only sorry that he found out before you did. I don't understand. Imagine what I go through every night. The music starts and the act begins. I move about the stage like a puppet. And then you enter, and everything begins to live. Come to the point, please. The excitement of standing on stage, facing the man who holds my life in his hands. You don't have to be afraid. No. It's a strange sensation. You look at me. Your eyes are so steady, so piercing. You aim and fire, and the bullet cuts through the air. I close my eyes, and then I feel a bullet hit the target, my shoulder strap. I tell myself that it was your hand. Every bullet is a caress. Do you see now? Mrs. Wallace, of 
because you realized it, now I have to look for two new assistants. Oh, no, Flamaria, no, please. You've left me no choice. Okay, so we close tonight. And you go to Frisco alone. See how the act goes without us. Wait. Considering the fact that it will be impossible for me to replace you on such short notice, I'll have to overlook what happened. You can go with me to San Francisco. Thank you, Flamarian. Thank you. That was the way Connie began. It was a first approach. I didn't know what was coming. I've been waiting for you for half an hour. I thought you'd never get here. How did you get in here? Wouldn't you rather know why than how? I'm not interested. In me or in anything about me. I know the line. Mrs. Wallace, please go. Close the door. I don't see any reason why I should. Please, for Marion. I know all about Alma. How do you know? You went through my suitcase. You are human. Oh, darling, I wasn't really spying. Maybe a lady wouldn't have done it, but I'm just a woman in love. I had to find out what made you afraid of me. I'm not afraid of anybody. Oh, yes, you are. You're afraid of your heart. I never allow a woman to enter my life again. Isn't that silly? Just because you were burned once. I must ask you again to leave. I had to come. Al's at it again. He beat me. I'm not interested in your domestic problems. You don't seem to want to believe anything. Do I have to prove everything to you? I'll show you. Never mind. Get off. What are you? Haven't you any feelings? Isn't there any place in your life for anything but your work? Don't you care about what happens to me at all? I thought I had made that perfectly clear. We work together, but that's all, understand? Well, for Marion, you can't toss me out like this. I haven't any place to go. Al's crazy drunk. If I go back now... I'll ring for the porter and he'll get you another room. The train's sold out. That's no concern of mine. Isn't it? Doesn't it mean anything to you that when I'm in trouble, my only thought is of you? I've forbidden you to speak this way. I can't help it. And it is your affair. Al's on a bender because, because he knows I love you. That settles it. You both leave the act in San Francisco. Simple, isn't it? I'm honest, and what are my thanks? You fire us. Exactly. So it's curtains for the Wallaces, huh? Now oh, I guess it's up to me to go back and break the glad news to Al. To probably start in right where he left off. The funny part of it is I don't give a hoot. And you don't either, do you, Flammarion? I do feel a certain responsibility. Then let me stay here. No. Please. Life's funny. I guess it happens to everyone sooner or later. It's not much fun to show your heart and then watch it get kicked around till it breaks, is it? Well, thanks for the lesson. All right. You may stay. You know, Flammarion, I just found out what's the matter with you. You're asleep. Maybe this will wake you up. like lightning. Not for 15 years, not since the tragedy of Alma and my dismissal from the army, had I been so close to a woman. One look into her mirror would have shown me that I was not for her, that there must have been something else behind it. It was three days from Pittsburgh to San Francisco, and in all that time, she never went back to her husband. I suppose he was too drunk to care. It seemed that a new life had just begun. A 
in reality, it was the beginning of the end. Shall I serve now? No, I'm waiting for a lady. And this is a very special occasion. Thank you. Hello, darling. Remember what you said that night on the train? I thought you'd never get here. Orchids and champagne. You think of everything. I'm trembling. You were as steady as a rock during the act tonight. Yes, but I wasn't waiting for you then. I love your hands. I stopped in at a little shop on Grand Avenue. Oh, a present. I hope you like it. It's the first gift I've made to a woman in 15 years. Oh, so merry, and it's beautiful. I bought it because I... I seem to see you in it. And you will, darling. But you must keep it for me. I would know I could never afford anything so expensive. His drinking's getting worse. It worries me. Yes, during the last show in Pittsburgh, I had to watch his every move. Yes, I know. One mistake... One serious mistake on his part might be fatal. It frightens me even to think of it. <laughs> he should be the one to think about it. Does he realize that my only reason for keeping him is you? If you want me, you've got to keep him. I've always been his meal ticket. Perhaps if I spoke to him and told him how we feel about each other? Oh, no, darling. That would only make things worse. But now we have each other, today and tomorrow, and all the other tomorrows. Just leave it to me. I'll figure it out. She made it sound so wonderful, so convincing. I believed her because I wanted to believe. But what I didn't know then was that on the same bill was a bicycle rider. He was young, handsome. something, honey? No, what? You look better to me now than you ever did. Why didn't you write me? I'm the kind of guy that likes to deliver things in person. How long are you going to be in town? Two weeks. Me too. We separated for months ago, I guess. Look, Eddie, our next jump's Los Angeles. Couldn't you get on Look, the if I don't make it, it won't be because I didn't try. Uh, Sixteen bars and I'm on. Beat me after the show. Don't I wish I could. Al's on the warpath. Let's make it tomorrow. That little bar around the corner. Hiya, babe. Hello, Cleo. What's new? Not a thing with me. Collecting men steal your hobby? Can you think of a better one? Yeah. I'll take my dogs every time. You don't sit up nights waiting for them. Good evening, boss. Good evening. Got a lot of class, ain't they? Plenty. Don't you think so, Con? Yeah, they're swell performers. He certainly is. Hiya, maestro. What gives? That guy's family must have been awfully fond of children. Flammarion's all right. He's just a little strange. Keep right on calling it strange, but in my book, he's strictly a heel. Well, I guess it's time to get down to the office. I'll see you around, Cleo. Don't go leaning into no bullets. Don't worry. Flammarion knows what he's doing. Meaning that I don't? See? That's what I meant when I said I'd take my dogs. You like it, darling? Very much. And do you like me a little, too? Connie, we've got to do something about Al. 
I thought if I were to make it worth his while, I mean financially. He'd only spend what you gave him. And then no dough, no wife, and no meal ticket. Oh, no. He'd never stand for a deal like that. I want to make a new life for us. That would be wonderful. Even if there isn't any chance of making it come true. It must come true. You're proud of these, aren't you? They were my only friends until I found you. I hope you take as good care of me. Put that thumb, that's dangerous. Now you know how I feel. What if I had as little faith in you? I entrust my life to you every night. That's another reason why we belong together in all this world. I won't even think about tomorrow without you. I know. I can't sleep at night. I just lie awake and dream about tomorrow. Or tomorrow. The other night, I dreamed about the three of us. It was on stage. You and Al and I. As Al stood before the mirror, you fired and missed. I never miss. Of course not. Al was drunk. It was an accident. I said it was just a dream, didn't I? I've asked you to come here because I want to talk to you. Okay. Start talking. Sit down. None of my warnings have meant anything to you. You still continue to drink. I know how to take care of myself. Don't you realize, Al, that every time we step onto that stage that you're nothing but a live target, which I must miss? I knew that when I took the job. Won't you let me help you? Help me? Let me lend you some money. Why? We're book solid, aren't we? Well, that means the old letters would be coming in every payday. Of course, I could always use a little extra money. Has it ever occurred to you, Al, that you might not be cut out for this sort of work? Why not go back to dancing? That costs dough. You may leave that entirely to me. I don't get this. Why should you put up your dough so that Connie and I can go back to dancing? I did not say you and your wife, did I? That's out. But I know now what you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it. Connie's been giving you the business, hasn't she? Well, she's not going to get away with it. Sink or swim, survive or perish. The Wallaces stick together. Fifteen minutes. All right, thank you. I got to get made up, but what I said still goes. The Wallaces stick together. So stop trying to run our lives right now. Al stood before the mirror. You fired and missed. Fired and missed. Fired and missed. What's eating you? I've had just about all of Mr. Flammarion I can use. And vice versa, I should say. What goes with you and him, anyway? With me and Flammarion? Oh, don't be a sap. That guy wouldn't be interested in Venus unless she had a couple of guns in her girdle. Well, he just had me in his dressing room for a pep talk which ended up with him trying to ease me out of the act and keep you in exchange for a little dough. Are you kidding? Do I look like it? What a nerve that guy's got, trying to run our lives for us. He covered up by telling me it was for my own good. Why, that dirty chiseler. Imagine trying to come between a husband and wife that way, and the crummy way he did it, offering you money, just as though I, I were... I don't know what kept me from punching him right in the nose. Honey? 
You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna quit the act. But, baby, we ain't got no dough. We can't afford to lay now off. Now that man. I know what sort of a man he is, I won't work with him any longer. And I'm surprised at you, hon. Haven't you any pride left? Yeah, but that check coming in every Tuesday is the difference between meat on the table and no bread in the house. Don't worry, sugar. We'll get another job. And we'll get it quick. You're a funny kid, Con. I don't mind telling you I had you figured all wrong. Just what did you think the score was? I don't know. But it looked to me like you were getting ready to take a powder on me. This evening, I was waiting for her at the usual time. She didn't come. I grew more and more restless. Time dragged, and always ringing in my ear was that terrible refrain, repeated over and over. Al stood before the mirror. You fired and missed. You fired and missed. It haunted me. It took possession of me. What about Los Angeles, huh? Can you make it? It's out. They offered me a Central American tour. Oh, well, Eddie, you can't take that. I won't let you. You know, we're a couple of heels. Al's a good guy. Here I am hiding in dark corners with his wife. We don't have to. Wouldn't make any difference if he knew all about us. I just can't figure that way. With you, it's all or nothing, hmm? Yeah. That's what makes me think I'll sign for that tour. We wouldn't see each other for a whole year. Well, I might be able to get you out of my blood that way. Is that what you want? To get me out of your blood? It's gonna be tough, but it's the only way out. It's a cinch, it's no good this way, so, well, uh, Central America. Eddie, don't sign yet, please. I've got an idea. Let me try and see if I can make it work. I know you and your ideas, hon, and well, some of them are good, but... Hey, there's Al. No matter how blind he gets, he doesn't need a seeing eye to lead him to a joint. Well, shall I... No, stay where you are. I'll handle it. Oh, Al. Over here. What are you doing here? I was waiting for you. I thought maybe I could keep you sober for a change. Eddie asked me to have a drink with him. Is there anything wrong with that? Hi, kid. Hello, Al. I was looking for you. I need some dough. I don't have any with me. But what did you do what with... What did I do with it? How much do you think there's left in the grouch bag after the way you've been kicking it around? For the love of Mike, cut out the preaching. Hey, George, give me a bourbon. See what the boys in the back room will have. Same here, George. Better make mine a double bourbon, George. I'm in kind of a hurry. Okay, Chum. You know, no matter how fast you drink it, the distilleries can still stay way ahead of you. Yep, but by next week, I'll have them working nights to do it. Someday you're gonna do that and not pull back anything but a stump. I've got something better to do than to sit here and watch you get plastered. Thanks for the drink, Eddie. I'll be seeing you. You're giving yourself quite a beating, aren't you? You're gonna start that, too. It's your wagon, chum. Paint it any color you want to. Look, Eddie. Do you know why I'm drinking? No, and what's then more? Then I'll tell you. It's her. Connie. She's got me bats. I don't know which ends up. What do you mean, Al? I can't. 
can't tell you, Andy. It's a question of honor. But if she don't cut out some of the stuff she's pulling, I'm gonna... You're right, Al. You shouldn't be talking to me about it. Me nor anybody else. It's strictly between you and Connie. I'll be seeing you. Andy, how's chances of a fin till Tuesday? Sure, Al. Here you are. Thanks. Now, how's about me buying you a drink? No, thanks, Al. I'll be seeing you later. You're late again. Where have you been? Al was suspicious. I thought I'd never get away. I was afraid something had happened to you. We've got to be careful. Al's changed since you talked to him. He's all burned up. In all fairness to him, I had to do it. Of course you did, darling. But you've only managed to make things tougher for us. In what way? Al's forcing me to quit. Oh, I'm sure I can talk him out of that. Nobody's ever been able to talk Al Wallace out of anything. Once he makes up his mind, nothing can change it. And you know what that'll mean. I'll never see you again. And I can't go on without you. You won't have to. You, you mean you've thought of a way? I'll cancel all my contracts and we leave the country. He'd managed to find out where we were and he followed us somehow. I know you don't like to be reminded of it, but... But this is the past repeated. You'd grow to hate me like you did Alma. You'd blame me and you'd be right. No. Once a woman you love double-crossed you. But I'm on the level. Lucky for you, unlucky for me. I just can't let you do it. one chance, the way you said. The way I said? Remember your dream? Well, I had the same dream. I was drunk. You mean? I stood before the mirror. I fired and missed. Don't ever say that. It was just like your dream. When did it happen? Tomorrow, the matinee. No. Saturday night performance. Everybody lets down. I'm certain I will be drunk. Absolutely certain. Now, it's all just a matter of timing. What's the matter? Where's Connie? But if you don't know, I'm sure I wouldn't. I've looked all over the hotel for her. I need some dough. You're drunk already, Al. Why not? What else is it to do? My office still holds, Al. Let me get you another job. I won't leave Connie. This way, you're driving her away. I'll get her back. Don't you worry about little Alsie. Maybe you could let me have ten bucks to pay day, huh, boss? Sure. It's a hundred dollars. I'm going to change. That's all right. I'll trust you. Me too. You're my pal. That's what I say every night. How about a drink? A cigarette to celebrate. Hmm? I never smoke. Good night. Good night.
change. Change. Darling. Hey, what'd you get me up in the middle of the night for? What's it all about? I had to see you right away. Eddie, everything's going to be all right. Yeah? How come? Don't ask too many questions. Just do as I tell you. Call your agent first thing in the morning and tell him you'll take that Central American tour. I don't get it. I thought you didn't want me to go. I've changed my mind. Because now I'm going with you. With me? Hey, what about Al? Al's a dead pigeon. And I'm clearing out for good. And I do mean good. He'll never let you go. You, you've tried that. Oh, yes, he I just found something out tonight that... Never mind what it was. But you take my word for it. I've got enough on him now so that when my lawyer tells him I want to go bye-bye, he can't say no. But that's blackmail. So it's blackmail. Has he played straight with me? Kicking me around, taking my dough? He forced me to... Hey, wait a minute. Who are you worrying about? Al or me? You wouldn't know the answer to that one. Well, then, act like it, will you? I thought I did all the drinking for the Wallace family. I kind of got the willies tonight. I thought maybe a drink might help. Oh, you worried about leaving the act? I wondered if I should have made you quit. Oh, sure you should. When we get away from here, things will be a whole lot better. There's room for improvement. Honey. I guess... You know why I act like this. I'm jealous. But once Flammarion's out of our lives, it'll be just like it used to when we first started out. Yeah, I, I bet it will at that. I know the going's been pretty tough, baby. But at least we've been together. Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing? Going sentimental on me? Maybe I got a funny way of showing it. But I'm, I'm just as crazy about you as I ever was. You know, you're kind of a sweet kid at that. Maybe you're right. Maybe from here on, things are going to be a whole lot better. Fifteen minutes. Okay. Well, here's how. Five minutes. I know the time. Everything all set?
I was like a man who walks through a nightmare with feet of lead. I didn't speak, I didn't dare to. I simply went on because now there was no turning back ever. about the stage like a machine. I looked at her. She was everything I wanted. Then Al stood before the mirror. July 9th have testified that Mr. Flammarion's performance went as usual in every single detail. The autopsy disclosed the presence of alcohol in the bloodstream of the deceased. In view of this fact, it is agreed that Al Wallace's intoxication caused him to make a mistake in timing which led to his death. Therefore, the coroner's verdict is accidental death. Jury is discharged. you ever on time? Did you miss me very much? These last two days were the most miserable I've ever spent. I missed you, too. Tickets for Las Vegas. I went to the bank this morning and I drew enough money out for a honeymoon. You shouldn't do that, darling. You shouldn't have bought tickets on the same train. That's dangerous. Well, then I can leave the next day and meet you there. If anyone found out that you took all that money out of the bank, then they saw us together. You'd just be begging for a call from the DA. Are you afraid? No, it isn't that. It's just that I don't want anything to happen to you. Nothing will, I hope. You know, it might be a good idea if I did go away for just a little while. But I told you I don't want to be separated from you again. Let's be sensible, darling. You've got to let the grass grow over it. We've got the rest of our lives to be together. When you figure it that way, three months isn't such a long time. Three months? Do you think I like the idea of leaving you? But where will you go? Hibbing, Minnesota. I haven't seen my mother in eight years. There never was enough time or money before. I'll write you every day. No, no letters, please. Never put anything in writing. 
Well, then I telephoned you. Don't you understand? We've got to be strangers. Even my family wasn't know we're friends. But we'll make up for it. Connie, you haven't even given me your address. So that I know at least where you are. I'd like to send you a little presents to let you know that I'm thinking of you. 2907 Ferndale's the address, if it's any easier for you. But no gifts. Widows shouldn't have admirers. Well, please take this. It will remove one of my worries until I see you again. And that will be exactly three months from tonight. October 14th, where shall we meet? As far away from here as possible. What about Chicago? I love Chicago. Chicago, the Empire Hotel. I'll register under the name of H.J. Brandt. Can you remember that? Mrs. Brandt joins you in Chicago at the Empire Hotel on October 14th. My name is H. T. Brandt. I have reservations. How do you do, Mr. Brandt? Your reservation is for October 14th. Yes, my wife arrives tomorrow, but I would like to check in now and prepare everything. Yes, of course. Show Mr. Brandt the bridal suite. Yes, sir. This Thank way, you. please, Mr. Brandt. Like it, sir? Yes, needs flowers. Is there flowers in the house? Yes, sir. Well, tomorrow morning I want six dozen roses, various colors, long stemmed. I want some uh, flowers for this vase and another basket with mixed flowers. Six gardenias for her pillow. And a standing order of a corsage, three orchids, the best, white, to be delivered every morning with our breakfast. Yes, sir. You got that straight? Yes, sir. Is there anything else, sir? Yeah, you can bring me some ice water. And I want good service. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Mr. Bryant. Good morning. I would like to get the schedule of all incoming trains and planes, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything else, sir? No, thanks. Good morning. Good 
morning, Mr. Brand. Have you any mail? No, sir, there's nothing. Have you anything under the name of Flammarion? Flammarion? F-L-A-M-A-R-I-O-N. He asked me to pick it up for him. I don't think there's anything under that name, but I'll see. Sorry, Mr. Brandt, there's nothing. Okay. Well, in case anything should come, you let me know immediately. Yes, sir. Yes. Six is nuts. He's done nothing but call me all day. No desk. It's Mr. Brandt, 1406. Haven't there been any calls, messages, letters? Has there been anything for my friend Flammarion? All right, thank you. I'm sorry, sir. It's a Mr. Grant, a uh, Mr. George Grant. Calling Mr. Grant. Calling Mr. Grant. Calling Mr. Grant. This is Mr. Brandt. Telegram. Well, send it up. Telegram for you, Mr. Brandt. Address unknown, addressee unknown. Thank you, Mr. Brandt. Any forwarding address, Mr. Brandt? I'll let you know. You appreciate the... I had lost all sense of time. The only excuse she could have had was death. Otherwise, she had double-crossed me. I didn't know which would have been worse. I had to find her. I remembered her ticket to Las Vegas. It was a wild chance, but my only clue. After I'd searched for days, I ended in the gambling club, like the rest of the suckers. What money I didn't lose gambling, I lost tracing Connie. Every day some racketeer gave me some new clue, all false. Then I went to Los Angeles to see the agent who placed Connie and Al in my act. Sorry, I've tried everything. I've checked with the NVA, Central Casting, and every agent in the business. Maybe she went back to dancing. I've covered all those angles, too. There's no trace of her. Look, Flammarion, why don't you start rehearsing with a new team? All you need is a couple of stooges who know how to stand still and keep sober. OK, then do a single. I can book you anywhere. Get back in your own racket and forget all this. Do you, do you need money?
Well, I guess, uh, gotta keep on looking. Well, good luck. I covered the country. Seattle, Detroit, Minneapolis, Philadelphia, Kansas City, everywhere. I was obsessed by one thought only, the thought of finding her. That's a mighty nice set of guns you got there. What do you want to do, pawn them or sell them? Sell them. I'll give you $80. Gotta keep this one. Oh, if you're gonna break the set up, I'll have to give you less money. I'll give you 60. I'll take it. I figured a smart guy like you let a dame make a sucker of him. I don't even know whether she's dead or alive. She's alive, all right. Her kind never dies. Well, then why can't I find her? Because you don't know what you're looking for, that's why. I don't know why I should help you, but here it is. Remember a bicycle act that was on the bill when we played for San Francisco? The wheeling... Wheelers. I understand they had a lot of trouble finding someone to replace Eddie when he left the act. The big, good-looking one. Connie was nuts about him then. And it ain't more than a year ago, so she probably still is. Last thing I heard about Eddie, he was someplace south of the border. So if you really want to find her, you better start hunting for him. But what you want with that dame after the way she crossed you up is something I'll never be able to figure out. At last, I had found something tangible to guide me. I hitchhiked my way to the border, then I walked. Finally, I got a ride on a truck here to Mexico City. I made the rounds of the whole town. Siempre en ti, tú eres mi amor.
going great with that guy in the wings tonight, weren't you? Why, honey, he's an old friend of mine. And you didn't come in until 2 o'clock this morning, did you? There's such a thing as carrying a friendship too far. My baby, I think you're jealous. Look, you're my wife. You're not going to get away with this stuff. It's got to stop. Now keep away from that acrobat. I'll do whatever my daddy wants me to do. Listen, I don't know what happened now, and I don't want to know. But I got a darn good idea, and it's not going to happen to me. You understand? You're talking awful big, little man. I'm going to go pick up our check. I'll be back in 10 minutes, and you'll be here. Yes, sir. Will there be anything else, sir? to get there. Three months weren't long enough to see your mother in Minnesota. You were so busy at home that that phony address didn't That's change. That's it. It was too long. Oh, I was wrong for Mary and all wrong. I know that now. Well, I waited for you and, and then Eddie came along. But I never stopped thinking about you, never. I know how it is. You haunted me too. Every minute you were away from me made me more unhappy. I'm so glad you've come. That's why I'm here. I've come to get you. Of course, it was different before. Nine hotels, nothing but the best. We'll have it all again, just the two of us. It'll be just like it used to be. We'll have our future together. Just as we had planned? Yes. We'll go back to the States, get a new act. You'll be a headliner. Your name will be in lights again. And you will be my assistant? Of course. And I'll have everything. Yes. Everything you want. And so will I. You go away. You don't belong here, Connie. We... We do understand each other, don't we? Yes, I understand. But this one time you keep your date. You wouldn't. You couldn't. I'm through and so are you. No think. I'll never squeal. Ever. That's right. Look, just let me go. I'll give you back your money, all of it. You won't need any now. You wouldn't dare. I'll tell him you'll kill my husband. I'll tell him that you're a murderer. And what are you? And I'm the last man you'll ever cheat. Why, you poor sucker. How could anyone love you? A fat bull neck, those squiddy eyes. You're old, you're ugly. Even the touch of you made me sick. I hated you, and I've always hated you. That was your curtain speech, Connie. Keep away from me. Keep away from me! as I could, until the lights went out, everybody had gone. All the time I was growing weak, loss of blood, then I let go. Tell them. It's the police, Flamarian. I said I was going to be dead when they got here. Didn't I?
Once, he was a respected citizen of a great city. He had everything a man could ask for. Wealth, power, position. And then, suddenly his whole world crumbled. For something happened. But what was it? What was it? What was it? I don't know what happened to me. I happened to you, that's what. me just the way I am. Nora Prentice, six songs an evening and an occasional drink with the better customers. You're the kind of man I can make a fool of myself about, and I don't like it. Nora. No, what's the use? When it's all over, what is there in it for me? Don't you think I know what's been going on between you two? Please, Richard, I'm tired. What's the matter? Do I disgust you? I didn't used to. Have you finished? Look, you're a very sweet guy, but... What is this? Another rehearsal? Take it easy, Thompson. There's nothing to get excited about. And keep away from Nora. I'm warning you. Don't! <laughs> 